Hey you skaters, this is my Udita W3 electric skateboard review. I'm currently out on a caravan adventure and there's a huge lake next to me, so you might hear the water trickling in the background. I am sorry if the audio or image isn't as good as it usually is. Udita is a fairly new company who, to be honest, I don't really know much about. Their YouTube channel's oldest video is from December 2020, so they haven't been around for long, yet they already have four different electric skateboard products on offer. The lineup is a bit confusing, so let me try to break it down for you. There is the 3 Series, which is what I'll be reviewing today, the 3 Pro Series, the Mini, and the Evo. The 3 Series, this one, has hub motors, while the 3 Pro has belt motors. That's the only difference between the two. You'll also see that for each of the 3 and the 3 Pro, there is one labeled S and one labeled W. The only difference here is the deck shape. They both have the exact same electronics in their respective series. Why they decided to split them into two different products and not just make the deck shape a variation that you can select is beyond me. The Mini, as the name suggests, is the shortboard version and it also has a slightly smaller battery pack. Everything else is the same as the 3 Series. Finally, the Evo is intended to be the all-terrain model. It has urban terrain wheels, wider double kingpin trucks, and bigger 1500 watt belt drive motors. It uses the same battery as the 3 and the 3 Pro. You need to position themselves as the first creative, transformable electric skateboard because they are aiming to target the vloggers out there. They have a system that allows you to mount a camera such as a GoPro, an Insta360 or any other compatible camera directly to your e-board. This comes in the form of a handlebar extension so you can transform your electric skateboard into a scooter board. I'll show you how this works and whether or not it is actually worth it later in the review, but first let's do the performance tests. The Udita boards are touted as long range electric skateboards and Udita claim they can get between 35 to 40 kilometers, which is 22 to 25 miles in a single charge. On my very first ride, my range was way below the marketed range. Take into account that this is the ride where I do all of my tests, including the top speed test and the hill climb test, while I also do a fair bit of carving. I pretty much ride the e-board as hard as I can. I'll also note that on this particular day, there was quite a lot of wind. After all that, I only ended up getting 21.8 kilometers, which is 13.5 miles. That is a very disappointing figure, so I contacted Spike from Udita to let him know of my results, and he said, it's impossible, do it again. So I did. This time I rode on completely flat, smooth paths along the coast. There was a lot less wind and I dropped my average riding pace, never going faster than 27 kilometers an hour or 17 miles per hour. All of this got me a total range of 28.1 kilometers, which is 17.5 miles. That's a 30% increase, which shouldn't be understated. Simply changing some conditions resulted in a fairly significant increase in range. Spike from Udita told me that they tested the range capability with a 70 kilogram or 154 pound rider. So me being 90 kilograms or 198 pounds definitely plays a role in me not hitting the spec range. Do I think 40 kilometers or 25 miles is possible? I would say yes, if the conditions were perfect. A 70 kilogram or 154 pound rider riding at a steady pace of about 20 kilometers or 12 miles per hour without too much stopping and starting on perfectly smooth and flat paths with zero wind, that will probably do the trick. At least now we can all see how much of an effect different conditions have on the range. Hopefully it gives you a good starting point to estimate what range you might be able to get. The marketed top speed of the Udita W3 and S3 is 45 kilometers an hour, which is 28 miles per hour. However, in my testing, I was only able to hit a max of 39 kilometers an hour, which is 24 miles per hour. I was only a few marks off the pace, so I would say that lighter riders would be able to hit the spec speed. The acceleration on the Udita W3 is very gradual. Even in the top speed mode, going from a standstill to full throttle, I never felt like it had the potential to throw me off. For 99% of the ride, there isn't any jolting in the acceleration. That 1%, however, occurs at the very end of the battery life. I'd say about five minutes off from a dead battery, the throttle starts to get this very slight jerking when you try to accelerate. It's not too much and hardly a hindrance to your ride. I thought I'd just better mention it because for beginners, it might be a little shock if you've never experienced something like this before. The 
braking on the Udita 3 Series is very gentle to say the least. You really need to be on your game when riding at high speeds because it takes a long time to come to a complete stop. I estimated about 20 meters or 21 yards from a speed of 25 kilometers an hour, which is 15 miles per hour. If anything unexpected was to happen while you were riding in excess of 30 kilometers an hour or 18 miles per hour, you'd be in a bit of trouble. Just make sure you're looking ahead and not riding at a pace that your brakes wouldn't be able to stop you within a safe distance. The Udita 3 Series is specced for a 30% hill grade, which I think is just a generic number all e-skate companies slap on the e-boards without really testing it. Let's take a look at the data for the hill climb test. This is my new regular hill climb test location, which I've set up as a segment on Strava so I can compare all electric skateboards in the future. It has an average hill grade of 8%, with the steepest section being 13%. I enter the hill at around 22 kilometers an hour, which is 13 miles per hour, then I floor the throttle. Now watch these two numbers. This one is the hill grade at a particular moment, and this is the speed that I'm climbing at. It's a slow incline and my speed doesn't change all that much until I enter the steepest section of the climb. The grade jumps up to 13% and my speed drops down to 10 kilometers an hour, which is six miles per hour. It struggles for a bit, then gets back up to 16 kilometers an hour or 10 miles per hour once the hill flattens slightly to 8%. Remember, I am 90 kilograms or 198 pounds, so it is expected that it should be harder to pull me up a hill. That said, there is zero chance it will pull me up a 30% hill grade and I'd be very interested to see just how light a rider needs to be in order to be able to climb a hill of that steepness on this e-board. Udita are very excited about their handlebar and how it gives riders the opportunity to turn their electric skateboard into a scooter board. So let's take a look at it and see what all the hype is about. For starters, the installation is pretty straightforward. You remove the current bolts on the front truck and replace them with the extra long ones provided along with the handlebar. You will have to cut holes in your grip tape to mount the handlebar. So if you do decide to go back to just the regular skateboard after trying out the scooter board, you'll be left with odd holes at the nose. Then you just screw the rest of the handlebar components together. There's two 3.5 millimeter threads where you can mount any camera, one at the top of the handlebar and one at the base. Here's where the entire design is flawed. The deck is flexible, so whenever there is a slight bounce from a crack or a bump, the board bends, causing the handlebars to go wild all over the place. It's really quite comical. Now there's three things that make this an issue. One, you lose control of the handlebars when that bouncing occurs. Two, naturally when this bouncing happens, you want to hold the handlebars steady. This puts tension on the deck at its weakest point between the trucks and the body of the deck. Three, the handlebar with the 3.5 millimeter the thread is aimed at providing vloggers the opportunity to set their camera on a tripod-like system so that they have extra hands free. Well, A, that camera will be bobbing around, not getting a single usable frame, and B, the spare hand you're supposed to have by mounting your camera, well, you'll just be hanging onto the handlebars trying to keep this thing steady anyway. Lastly, when you're riding with the handlebars, you still need to hang onto the remote. So it's either one hand on the handlebars or awkwardly holding the remote against the bars, both of which aren't particularly safe. It would have been really cool if they implemented a remote control into the actual handlebars themselves, or maybe like a transformable remote where the throttle pops out of the handheld remote and can be plugged into the handlebar. I think there are opportunities for this scooter board to be a thing, but for now, this just isn't it. The Udita 3 Series has a 38 inch bamboo and fiberglass deck with a very slight concave. It has standard grip tape, which hasn't been applied symmetrically, and that kind of irks me a bit. I know it has nothing to do with the performance of the board, but it does signal to me the level of quality assurance they undertake on their products. That leads me to the hardware. I don't think it's the best quality. The base plates already had paint chipped off around where the bolts are when it arrived. This is a shame for Udita because it's only a perceived sense of quality. The hardware might be fine. In fact, the trucks are surprisingly nice. They are eight inch magnesium aluminum alloy, so pretty standard. But the interesting thing about these trucks is that I felt more comfortable on the deck when the trucks were a bit looser. When I had them tighter, but not full lock, I had next to no turning capability, not even for a side to side sway. This was unnerving because any shift in my body weight resulted in me just 
falling off because the board didn't follow my movements. When I did finally find my ideal settings for the trucks, the carving was great. I couldn't get too deep of a carve, but I could get a nice and easy S-curve going on. The 90mm 78A wheels are soft and grippy, giving me plenty of confidence to take corners at decent speeds. The rear wheels have a larger contact area than the front wheels, which I think is what gives the e-board a sense of control around corners while maintaining carvability in the front end. The dual 500 watt hub motors have a nice amount of PU between them and the road, which helps it to absorb some of the vibrations from the road. But it's the large riser pads that will be doing a lot of the vibration absorption. The battery spec is a 10S 3P array of 18650 cells, pumping out 328 watt hours. That's a decent size for this category of e-board. It's exciting to see that battery technology is fast becoming more affordable, and we are starting to see bigger and better batteries in affordable electric skateboards. The best thing about this battery and the e-board as a whole is the removable battery pack. This is a simple system that works well enough. It does look a bit like the old enclosures that DIYers used to use where they bolted a Tupperware container to the bottom of their decks and stuffed all the electronics in there. This solution, however, is a little more elegant as there is a separate enclosure for the ESC and the big box is just for the battery. To take the battery out, all you need to do is pinch the tabs together and it lifts out. It is a heavy battery and the clips are tight, so you need to use a bit of force to get it out. I wouldn't exactly say it's easy, but I'd rather it be stuck in there tight than it falling out while riding. Then all you have to do is disconnect this cable. You can charge the battery separately from the board, which is so handy. You can leave your board out in the garage and just take the battery inside to charge. Your wife, husband, family or whatever will thank you for this. Also, the battery has a USB out, so you can charge any of your USB powered devices such as your phone. The Udita boards are powered by a Lingi ESC, which generally divides e-skaters. My experience with this one has been somewhat the same. For the most part, it is fine. It accelerates and brakes smoothly and gently. However, there is a slight amount of dead space in the throttle and braking. What I mean by this is when you accelerate or brake, there is a few millimeters of movement in the thumb wheel before the motors engage. I don't know if I'm being too picky here or not, although there is enough dead space for it to be noticeable. After a while, I did get used to it and I adjusted my riding style to suit, but it's just something worth noting. The other thing that had me concerned with this remote is a little more serious. When you're accelerating, even at full throttle, if you hit the mode button, the board will click over into the new mode and start accelerating or decelerating if flicking from mode four back around to mode one. The way my hand naturally sits on the remote leaves my fingers hovering over these buttons. On more than one occasion while out on a ride, I accidentally dropped into gear one when I usually ride in gear four. That shudder of unknowingly decelerating was a shot to the confidence when riding on this e-board. If you were a beginner riding around in mode two, then accidentally clicked over into mode three without realizing or being prepared, the board would quickly accelerate, throwing your balance off. Some people like this feature. In fact, X-Way offer it as an option in their app, but the default is you can only change modes when you're not accelerating and you have to switch it otherwise. Am I being overcautious on this? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this setting. Another minor detail about the remote is that the odometer shows a speed which is consistently four to five kilometers above what my actual speed was being measured on my watch. I know that there are delays in GPS, so I tested this over a space of 20 seconds. Plus, I haven't seen this level of discrepancy in other e-boards using the same testing method. At the end of the ride, there aren't any sound or vibration warnings to let you know that the battery is starting to run flat. There possibly could be some beeps coming from the board because I did hear some after I stepped off, but they are impossible to hear while you're riding. In my opinion, all e-skate remotes should have some kind of haptic feedback because it is hard to hear beeps when you're riding. So when you do come to the end of the ride, the acceleration just cuts out. You gradually lose acceleration power and top speed as you near the end, but the cutoff still feels quite abrupt. Thankfully, you do still have access to your brakes in the unlikely case that you're riding downhill at the time the battery goes flat. Overall, the Udita W3 and S3 are interesting electric skateboards to say the least. They have great range capabilities and the ability to quickly swap the battery means you can go for extended rides without having to stop somewhere to juice up. I think the whole product is let down by trying to be something that it is not. The implementation of the handlebar and its usability is clunky and truthfully 
just not worth it. Udita has a unique opportunity here to develop the idea further and really perfect it because I think when it's done right it'll be really cool but it's just not quite there yet. The rideability is easy and non-threatening which is fantastic for beginners so long as you're aware of the nuances of the remote control. I'd recommend this electric skateboard to someone who only cares about riding the farthest possible distance in one go. That's my Udita W3 electric skateboard review. I hope I've helped make your search for the best electric skateboard a little easier. If I have, slam the like button and hit subscribe to stay up to date with the latest and best electric skateboard reviews and news. If you have any questions about any Think that I didn't cover in this review, please drop them down in the comments below and I'll try to get you the answer. Thanks for watching. As always, ride safe out there, e skaters. I'll see you soon.